everyone it's Chelsea from Hip Rock Tio Studio and this is my speed version of what I did on the art joy sharing live stream today which was a page an abstract page in my junk journal junk journaling is the process of practice and play without expectations in a journal that you have created or purchased from someone else who's created that's made out of junk literally junk and this page this page is junk and I uh, I was inspired by a couple things I wanted some texture today in my design because I had glued that uh, little little um, business card down in the the left hand corner and I knew that that was gonna create an edge a line um, no matter what I did because it was it's raised up from the page right um, that is a business card from Saska who makes uh, these beaded bracelets that I wear and if you guys would like an affiliate link or a coupon um, that it's down below the video uh, I love these bracelets they're not made out of metal so they um, they don't make my skin itch because I'm sometimes allergic to metal they're made out of beads um, little tiny seed beads that have been crocheted by some ladies and villages in Nepal and um, so I'm kind of obsessed with them I think I have about 40 of them now <laughs> I keep buying more they keep coming out with more so anyway I added some texture using some uh, golden molding paste and putting it through a stencil that had some lines and blocky type things to just kind of continue it continue those vertical and then add horizontal lines across the page I I am inspired by something but this is intended to be abstract like an abstract concept I'm going to be taking a driving trip up uh, going to drive over to the California coast Santa Barbara and then drive up to uh, San Santa Cruz and San Jose uh, to drop off a car to my son who lives in Santa Cruz and while I'm doing that I'm going to go with my friend and we're going to um, stay at some hotels along the way and make a little mini vacation of it then we're going to fly from San Jose up to Oregon and go to the Oregon coast for three days and so I was thinking about a really cool picture I took last year when I was on this long driving trip in Bandon Oregon of kind of a, a bunch of boats in a harbor and it was getting dark and it was kind of stormy and that's kind of what I was thinking about in my head but going abstract with it so some of the shapes are a bit triangular that I'm making a lot of them are very linear when you're looking at boats um, you've got your horizon line but then you've got like a lot of things that are sticking up a lot of vertical lines so I added those type of things plus some triangular shapes to my texture and I did a lot of that with masking tape um, this is painters tape for artists and it's not as sticky as some masking tape which I found later when I got it way too wet and some of it started to peel off if I was to make this for reels like on a canvas if I was to use this type of texture with the masking tape I would do it with matte medium um, to help glue it down and make sure it's sealed at least put a sealing coat over it but this is my junk journal it's junky paper it's you know nothing special and so I'm not worried about it I just stuck it down using the adhesive on the tape itself and I did um, stack the tape together I tore a piece stacked another piece on top of it to make it a little bit thicker and then tore those pieces so that they weren't super um, cut edge bit more organic looking while still being um, linear shapes so now I have covered this with a combination of black and white gesso mixed together to make kind of a, a moody gray color and I'm adding some of this raw umber acrylic ink and letting it getting it wet and letting it drip down and kind of go in and amongst the textures to kind of help the texture stand out a little bit and then I did the same thing with this really dark midnight blue color of acrylic ink 
and uh, let it drip, added water to it. The result of this is that I got this thing super wet because I was spraying it with a spray bottle and that's when uh, some of those bits of tape decided that they wanted to start peeling up. Not surprising, it's a low tack tape for artists anyway and I didn't put any type of adhesive other than the, what was on the tape. So um, the next thing I decided to do was use some acrylic paint to kind of highlight some of the texture. So I'm using a very stiff stenciling brush and I've got some heavy gesso and I'm just brushing through uh, the, the paint on my palette, the gesso on my palette and then just kind of brushing like a broom across really, really lightly to let that white gesso hit the tops of the tape. However, as I'm doing that, it's peeling some of the tape off. So I think at some point I just decided, at first I decided to try and stick them back down and that wasn't working particularly well. And then, um, then I decided that I would just peel it off and it would become part of the design. So, you know, roll with it as you're doing your mixed media layers. Don't stress over it, especially if you're using a junk journal. Just keep on moving and, and you know, if, if the tape wants to peel off, let it peel off. It adds a, another interesting color layer. Um, I didn't want to peel all the tape, obviously. I only was pulling the ones that were super loose because they just got too wet from all that spraying. So this is definitely not the process you would use if you were going to do it as a permanent piece of art. Um, but in a junk journal, doesn't much matter, does it? It really doesn't. <laughs> Actually, it added some interesting color underneath there that I didn't really think was going to go with the page when I started to peel it. Um, some of that ink even had sunk underneath the paper and then also on this left hand side there was a photograph and it ended up having some of those same dark colors. So the next thing I wanted to do my next layer is acrylic paint so I got out some Titan Buff and some of that pinky one I can't remember what it's called right now and then uh, some light very light baby blue and then I did end up getting some dark blue and these are just uh, either Liquitix Basics or Amsterdam tube paints the ones that I normally use for gel printing and they're just in my drawer next to me so nothing super fancy but I'm using a small brush and I'm starting to kind of figure out what shapes of all this abstract texture do I want to either paint in or paint out, basically. I'm either going around the shapes and letting them stand out more or else I'm covering the shapes and pushing them backwards. And this is a completely um, intuitive process. I'm not stressing about it. In fact, I'm just, I'm chatting in the live stream during this and, you know, answering questions and talking to Peg and basically just uh, not a lot of thought more of intuition. I do want these triangular shapes to show. Um, I want some dark, I want some light. So I'm letting those textures and shapes guide what I'm doing just for fun. So you can kind of see my abstract boat shapes starting to come out. Um, you know, those triangular sail type, long, tall, vertical things. And then you're also, <clears throat> starting to see the design of the horizon line coming out <clears throat> which is going across about two-thirds down across the page and that's where the water would be but this is not intended to be like someone could see this and not necessarily see boats and water they could just see something that reminds them of something else or it's just real super random um I am thinking about boats and water. So hopefully some people see that, but it's not, it's not like I painted a boat on some water. You know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> it's abstracted. So I'm just continuing to throw a little bit of paint on there to define and either pull or push shapes. That's all I'm doing. Sometimes I add a little bit of water to the paint. Um, sometimes I smoosh it with my finger just to make it look a little bit more organic. 
I'm also really during this entire process not intending these these horizontal and vertical lines to be crisp. That is not my intention at all. In fact, I'm working to make them not crisp. So if if I do have a straight cut edge on something, I try to, you know, zhuzh it a little bit and make it a little bit less obvious. So then I want to do another layer of collage with some other pieces of paper. Uh, a while ago, I got this um, inexpensive swivel knife, and it came with some swivel knives and this inexpensive cutting board. And, you know, when you watch the video of the swivel knife and they're like, zoom, 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 and it looks so, like, looks like it's super easy and it cuts super well, that's not really true. <laughs> At least not with this cheap one. But um, it does work. As you can see throughout the video, you'll see me cutting with it. Um, you try to make so that so that little silver bit on the end spins and you try to make it go straight and then just then you can move your hand and your wrist back and forth and make wavy lines or more you know it, it's whereas with an exacto knife it's so fixed and straight that when you try to cut a wavy line it's not as easy with this thing it's really easy to go loosey-goosey because that thing on the end spins around but I do wish it was a little bit sharper because like on this piece of paper that I'm trying to cut, it's a piece of cardstock, and I have to cut through twice to get it to cut. So, and this thing hasn't been used much at all, if any. So it should cut cut better than that. Um, is it the operator? Is it the product? You know, what can you say? <laughs> so on this cardstock piece, I did put some um, glue stick on the back of it before I stuck it down because I knew that just putting the uh, matte medium that I was using was going to be a pain. It was going to peel back up. So um, I stuck it down first with the glue stick and then I put some of that matte medium over the top. So this one is paint on some newsprint. I also put on a darker one that had some different scrapings of black and blue, which is like one of those pieces of under paper that I've scraped off excess acrylic paint onto <clears throat> or else rolled it off depending on what I was doing whether I was printing or painting. I've got some of these um, kind of wavy shapes at the bottom and that gives you a little bit more of that idea of water at the bottom while being not super literal but still the lines are wavy like waves so that kind of gives you another little hint. And I'm gluing those down with Liquitex matte gel medium and a brush. Also, I cut a few more um, triangular sail type shapes to go across the center above the horizon line. Um, another thing that I find interesting when I'm looking at boats in a harbor, especially at night, is that you'll get a reflection sometimes like if there's like a bright moon or something you get this reflection <clears throat> you see the boats and the sails but then you see the reverse of it in the water so i'm not i'm not making the water like this is the cutoff this is where everything ends and everything below this is water i am going to continue this the shapes down into that space in order to let it have kind of a reflection. And I did decide to put a moon on and I used some neutral colored paper, which is similar to Titan Buff, obviously, which I had already used. Then I started cutting the edges of that same piece of paper into long, thin strips. And those are meant to represent the masts, the things that the, the, uh, the sails hang on which also will give a reflection into the water. So I'm not sticking them down. Um, oh, those two were pretty, pretty big long shapes, but for some of them, I am adding little breaks, uh, breaking the paper and letting it uh, kind of go across to be kind of like 
So if you have a reflection in the water and a wave comes across, it will break that reflection and you'll end up with like a dashed line instead of a straight line if the thing that you're reflecting is a line at all. So um, I'm adding some of that type of a look too. So this may, may seem really random, but I actually am thinking as I'm doing it. I'm thinking about what I'm trying to portray in a very abstract and, uh, you know, moody sort of way. This is, it's dark, it's stormy, it's um, how I've been feeling lately, very dark and stormy. So <laughs> that's why I can't get anything done because I can't get out of bed. But live stream forces me to uh, meet an obligation that I have. So in that way, it does create a situation where I have to get up and do the things that I've agreed to do. So that's why I was on the live stream today. Otherwise, I would have been in bed. So I've got all that stuff glued down. I think I'm getting pretty close to being done with gluing, maybe. Maybe this... Oh no, I decided I needed like, what I really wanted was like Naples yellow, which is a, a more muted yellow than this. Um, I ended up with kind of just some very scratchy paper that had yellow paint on it. It's actually a uh, newsprint paper. It has a little bit of yellow paint scratched on it. So just decided I wanted yellow. I was thinking about flags. Um, you know how boats sometimes have those flags on the mast, but I ended up deciding to just add some yellow here and there because I felt I needed another color. And reflections from the moon are yellow. So I was trying to go for a more muted color than that, but it ended up be working out fine. So I'm just sticking those on here and there in a few places. And then I think I am done with the collage layer. So got layer of texture, layer of gesso, um, some inks, some more gesso highlights, some more paper. And I think I'm going to finish it up with some graphite in a minute. So I guess I decided I was done with collage. And then this is a, this is a graphite, very fat pencil. And graphite is what's inside of uh, regular pencils, like a number two pencil, has a firm graphite in it. This is a very soft graphite, Lyra, kind of a crayon, and it's very water soluble. And what I was thinking again was I wanted not super straight lines, like I wanted some straight lines, but I wanted them to be um, just messed around with a little bit, some shadows and some highlights. So I'm just doing that with this graphite and then blending it with my water brush because it is very for this soft of graphite which I think is the 9b uh, it's very water soluble so um, and it's the color of it is a dark gray that has just a little bit of shimmer to it so it seems moody to me it seems dark and moody <coughs> which is why I picked it and this page is wet it is saturated the ink has gone through the book and through the middle of the book into some other pages I got it way too wet. <laughs> Wet's not really great for junk journaling because the paper is so uh, thin and, you know, annoying to begin with. And then you get it wet and it makes it even worse. But hey, do what I say, not as I do. Or don't. <laughs> it's a junk journal. It does not matter. So I think the last thing I did was to add a little bit of white um, super white highlight here and there and some splatters with this fat white Posca pen. This is white acrylic ink in a pen and um, I thought since it was supposed to be a moody sky that it would have a few little stars. Since I bothered to put the moon in I might as well put the stars in, right? And then I found a couple of these uh, stickers, the, the ones that are from Tim Holtz that are from a from book pages like little pieces of book pages and I stuck a couple of those on and I was done with this page I hope you liked this video and if you did please remember to give it a thumbs up leave me a comment or question below subscribe if you haven't already turn on your notification bells if uh, YouTube has turned them off for you 
and you didn't notice <laughs> also you can join my channel membership if you if you'd like there's a little join button there you can do that and get exclusive content so that's it for me for today thanks for watching bye bye